Welcome to the Gospel Online. Thanks for tuning into this presentation. This is part of a series under the general heading, The Trinity and Is Jesus God? And the particular topic that I'm going to talk about for a few minutes now is Jesus died for our sins, one of the central tenets of the Christian faith. The plan of my talk is as follows. First of all, that the death of Jesus of Nazareth is a historical fact. Second part is why Jesus died. Then we're going to move on to what the death of Jesus tells us about whether Jesus was truly human or whether he was God in another form. And then finally, I'll ask the question, well, why does it matter? So let's begin then with a fact. Jesus of Nazareth lived and died around 2000 years ago in the Middle East, in the Roman province of Judea and in Galilee. I just want to start with the resurrection of Christ. People who call themselves Christians uh, often disagree about all sorts of things, but the very large majority of Christians agree on one particular fact, and that is that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. In a BBC Comres survey in 2017, 93.2% of our active Christians in the UK said they believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we might say this is core to Christian belief. I'm not trying to prove the resurrection now, that's not my subject, but the Christian hope depends on it. As the Apostle Paul said to the church in Corinth when he wrote to them, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ hasn't been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. But I suppose regardless of one's view on the resurrection of Christ, Jesus of Nazareth lived and died in the Middle East, whether or not you believe in the resurrection. Take this, for example, a book by Oxford, uh, late Oxford professor Geza Vermesh, not a Christian, but an expert on Near Eastern history at the time of Jesus, wrote this book, Jesus in the Jewish World, a number of other books on similar topics, in which he establishes that Jesus Christ very much lived and impacted on the Middle East history at that time and that he died. But why did Jesus die? At one level, I suppose you might say, um, the leaders of the Roman province of Judea saw him as a threat. This is what the Gospels tell us, that the high priest, Caiaphas, uh, the chief Jewish leader at the time, said to the members of the Jewish council, the Sanhedrin, you know nothing at all, nor do you understand that it is better for you that one man should die for the people, not that the whole nation should perish. He was clearly concerned about the uh, the safety of the uh, Jewish Commonwealth at that time. And interestingly, um, Professor Vermesh says something similar in, in his book, um, Jesus in the Jewish World. Let me just read you a few words from it. For the country people of Northern Palestine, Jesus was a man of God. And even in Jerusalem, he was hailed as the prophet from Nazareth. The tragic end of Jesus came suddenly in the course of his pilgrimage to Jerusalem 
probably in the year 30 of the Christian era. The priestly authorities constantly feared a rebellion in the overcrowded city. They handed over to the secular arm of Rome the man whom they considered potentially dangerous. Pilate, notorious for his cruelty, did not hesitate to put to death the so-called King of the Jews. Jesus expired on a Roman cross, says Vermesh, the historian. A Roman historian from the first and second centuries uh, who wrote a history uh, covering the years 14 to 68 AD, the Annals, said this, Christus, the founder of the name, that is Christians, had undergone the death penalty in the reign of Tiberius by sentence of the procurator, Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. Was Pontius Pilate weak? Was he trying to appease the Jewish leadership? Or was it political expediency? Well, it might have been any of those, but Jesus was not a political reformer, nor did he want to overthrow Roman power or usurp the Jewish leadership. He didn't want to assert Jewish nationalism, although there were those around at the time who thought he ought to have done. My kingdom is not of this world, he said. Nor was he a social reformer. He preached obedience to the law. He preached proper payment of taxes, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, he said. So why did Jesus choose to die? And yes, he did choose to die. He tells us in the Gospel of John and chapter 10, I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. The Bible says that Jesus' cruel death was, first of all, part of God's plan. And secondly, it was necessary to deal with sin, to deal with disobedience to God's laws. But if Jesus was God, how could God dying deal with sin? It couldn't. After all, human sin is the fault of humans themselves, not of God. And anyway, as the Bible says, God can't die. Apostle Paul says this to Timothy. To the king of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. God is immortal. God does not and cannot die. No, a human had to die. The first human's sin had consequences for all humans. Apostle Paul said this in his letter to the Romans, chapter 5. Sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin. And so death spread to all men, because all men sinned. So it needed a sinless human being to reverse those consequences. Apostle Paul went on to say, if because of one man's trespass, his sin, Seth, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through one man, Jesus Christ. Notice the emphasis 
on Jesus as a human in this passage. Or again, at the beginning of this letter, Romans chapter one, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart from the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, who was descended from David, according to the flesh. Right at the beginning of this letter in which he's explaining these things, he tells us that Jesus was descended from his forebear, King David in the Old Testament, according to the flesh. Like David, he was a human being. But he was also sinless. That was the key. Since then, we have a great high priest, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have an high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. So Jesus was sinless, but what does this tell us about Jesus' humanity? If Jesus had been God, it wouldn't have reversed Adam and Eve's or our failure to obey God. But what if Christ had a dual nature? What if he was somehow both human and divine, both God and man? Surely that would get round this problem. Uh, then the divine bit of Jesus could stay alive while the human bit died on the cross. Indeed, after the first century, in due course, it was later suggested uh, that that was indeed the case. But there's a problem. The Bible simply doesn't say that. That is not Bible teaching in any way. On that scenario, Jesus, wouldn't have died fully. He would only have died partly, or he would only have appeared to die. Because, as we saw, God is immortal. God doesn't die. So if Jesus had a divine part, surely that wouldn't have died either. The Lord Jesus Christ, we conclude, had to be fully human, and yet he didn't deserve death. Then, as a matter of divine justice, after his death, God would raise him up, because God is just, and death is the penalty for sin, but Jesus did no sin. So God raised him again from the dead. Then Jesus could mediate between humans like you and me and God in heaven. The Apostle Paul wrote this to Timothy. God desires all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth, for there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. Do you see how the apostle here emphasizes humanity? He emphasizes our humanity. Jesus is a mediator between God and humans, us, but also Christ's humanity, the man, the human being, Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all. So the final section, why it matters. Well, we live in a postmodern, a rationalistic age. Um, we make up our minds what we want for ourselves. 
and we have great blessings in that respect. And yet so often truth doesn't seem absolute, does it? It seems to be what people want it to be or what people believe it to be. And yet the Bible says God's truth is absolute. It is unchanging. It is objective. It is what he has set out in the Bible. So his promise of salvation through Christ is also firm. And it is achieved through resurrection, just as Christ was raised from the dead to die no more, so human beings in Christ can be raised from the dead. Here are some more verses from that chapter in Romans, Romans chapter 5. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So now we have been justified by his blood. We'd be saved by him from the wrath of God, says Paul. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Reconciliation with God is achieved through Jesus' mediatorship by Christ's death. Salvation, ultimate eternal life in God's kingdom when Christ returns, is achieved through Christ's resurrection. And of course, the fact that Christ is now living forever shows that his salvation works and is our guarantee of future salvation. To summarize, the death of Jesus is a historical fact. Why did Jesus die? Because it needed a sinless human being to reverse the damage done by the first human sin and by our sin. For this to work, Jesus had to be truly human and not God in another form. And why it matters? Because as a human, Jesus understands our problems and invites us to share in his future kingdom. If you have been, thank you for listening.